In an assembly of representatives from all over the world, held in San Francisco in 1945, the United Nations was founded. The structure of world peace cannot be the work of one man or one nation. It cannot be a piece of large nations or of small nations. It must be a peace which rests on the cooperative effort of the whole world. There can be no middle ground here. We shall have to take the responsibility for world collaboration, or we shall have to bear the responsibility for another world conflict. The United Nations offered hope to a war-weary world. And October 24th, United Nations Day, has been celebrated enthusiastically across Micronesia ever since. You know, the big day was the UN Day, October 24th, when everybody come in. And there was a spirit that was, you don't see it today, where not only young kids, high school, college kids now play sports, even the older people, they had sports those days. But the United Nations also offered the U.S. a way to legitimize control over the islands it had taken during the war, much as the League of Nations did for the Japanese 30 years earlier. When the war was over, the people who had been involved in the military actions out here were convinced that the islands had very strong strategic value, and they wanted to be absolutely certain they would never be used in an attack against the United States again. The only way to be that sure would be to take them. If these islands were in the hands of a power which was hostile to the United States or to the free world, then uh, this would create some very severe problems indeed. These atolls, these island harbors, will have been paid for by the sacrifice of American blood, argued Admiral Ernest King in a public speech. And the U.S. Navy was determined to keep them. Twice earlier, after the Spanish-American War and after World War I, the U.S. had a chance to occupy the islands, but did not do so. The U.S. military resolved not to repeat the same mistake. But at the same time, we had signed a, con uh, a treaty with uh, the top uh, powers, the United Nations, that none of the victorious powers would take any of the former colonies of the losing parties. So we were caught in a catch-22. For months, a debate raged in Washington on what to do with the islands. In the end, compromises were made, and the islands were to be made a colony. But not really a colony. In 1947, they finally reached a compromise, and that compromise was that Micronesia would be created as a strategic trusteeship. This is the only one that was ever created by the UN, a strategic trust territory. It gives us the power to maintain the islands as long as we wanted them, without any interference from anybody, any other power. The U.S. would have administrative powers broad enough to accommodate the desires of the military. It reserved the right to make military use of the islands and to exclude visitors from them. Uh, we were still obligated under the trusteeship agreement to improve the education and social services, improve the economic development, develop a political structure, and to prepare the people for eventual self-government or independence as they may choose. But it doesn't say when. Despite their new status, the Navy remained firmly in control of the territory until 1951. 
the Navy, they were not trained to, uh, to administer any territory. They were trained to fight. So, you know, the headquarters of the uh, Trust Territory was not located in Micronesia. It was located in Honolulu. They were running Micronesia by remote control. The administrative policy of the U.S. was to let local people set the pace in development. As Admiral Lewis Stenfield put it, government under the Navy was to be minimalist, so as not to interfere with the happy, simple life of these island people. But the Navy would soon find it necessary to interfere with the happy, simple life of the people, after all. <laughs>